Welcome in. It's Michael Murray with Benzinga, joined here today by Alex Salnikov, the Chief Strategy Officer at Rarible. Very exciting interview here. Very excited to have the chance to be able to sit down with you. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Busy as always. This, Despite the bear market, I'm having quite a packed schedule, back to back to calls. But of course, I'm super stoked to be here. Thank you for having me. That's great. We're excited to have you, man. Thank you for taking the time. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Rarible is a very talked about term in the NFT and the crypto and the digital asset space. Everybody knows the name. For anybody that hasn't heard it or isn't super familiar with the platform, give us a quick overview of Rarible. What exactly is it? Most of the people know Rarible as the platform to go and create your first NFT, create your artwork and put it on sale and sell. Uh, that's how we were started in 2019. Over time, we evolved into the full featured marketplace that actually has all the NFTs. So you can click my profile and you would see all NFTs that are in your wallet across all chains and across all marketplaces that you, you could ever buy. And that, that made us a full featured marketplace, a secondary where you can trade assets that are not only on Mirable. And while creating that, we actually created the technology, which is a super strong indexer that, that gives the information about all these NFTs. So now we're using this technology to provide this API access to other people that want to build apps or marketplaces uh, and that will be aware of NFTs, as well as we provide the vertical marketplaces for brands that want to enter this space. We have 5,000 NFT marketplaces generated with our tech alongside with the wearable being a very big one that generated $300 million of NFT sales. Awesome. Okay, so understanding what wearable is and obviously what you guys have accomplished in the space is extremely impressive. Let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges that the NFT and crypto space have faced over the last two years. You said it a second ago, even with the challenges in the bear market and the difficulties you guys have dealt with, you've got a packed schedule, you're in back-to-back -back meetings. Talk to us about some of the things that have happened in the NFT industry over the last two years and what you guys have done at Rarible to overcome those challenges. Of course. Well, the crypto space is inherently very cyclical. We are following the Bitcoin halving market cycle every four years. It surprisingly happens every time. Um, it should have been priced in by that, na by that time, but we're still seeing this correlation. Every four years, we're having a major boom. Everything grows, prices are growing, and then we're seeing the, the um, unrealized expectations of people just busting. And that's what's called the bear market, right? Of course, that happens with NFTs and to some extent, even more with NFTs than in, with other assets because NFTs only had its first generation of, of boom and bust. Most of the people only once heard that NFTs are awesome. And then they read the, the, the article from Rolling Stones that 95 NFT, 95% of NFTs are, are dead. Uh, so, um, that's that's the main impression of of the people happening with the market but uh obviously the public perception and just the technology evolution are going sideways in in reality uh just from the beginning where nft capabilities are only growing and improving and there is new use cases there is more and more people that are actually coming for the space for real utility so the, the number of people that came to enjoy NFTs and have them in this space, it's only growing. And, and the number of use cases on, is only growing. And we are focusing on that, so to say, to overcome these um, unrealized expectations. We are focusing on what has always been cool with NFTs, the fact that you have an online digital identity that is universal across all the NFT websites. You connect your wallet, you see your, all your wallets, you see all your assets in all the places, and it gives you the perception, it gives you the full ownership of assets, and that gives you emotion of being in control of things that happen on the internet. And it gives you pure consumer joy. I love this example that whenever I buy an iPhone, I pay a thousand dollars to somebody and I'm happy, right? That's, that's, the, that's the emotion we're looking for, for somebody to spend money and be happy, not for somebody to spend money and expect that they're getting more money in return. That's, that's the main difference. That is called retail NFT market. It's growing. It's growing with layer twos. It's growing with major brands that are entering this space. And we are just on it everywhere. We're embracing artists, royalties, all the fundamentals.
Absolutely. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Layer 2 shortly, too. But you mentioned it a second ago, and I think you know what's really exciting for us and what we're really looking forward to is in November, we'll have our Future of Digital Assets event in New York. We're going to have our FinTech event as well. We're going to be talking about all of this that we're kind of doing a quick promo for right now. So it's great to be able to get an inside look with you ahead of time. But you know, pursuant to what we're going to be talking about at the event, what's the future for NFTs, right? The real world application of them as we move forward down the road. What do you think is most exciting about this industry, even with the bear market that we faced the past two years? What's really exciting you about the future of this industry? There is two fundamental ways. Uh, first of all, NFT as the standard is an extremely powerful thing that represents non-fungible assets tokenized on chain. The world consists of mostly on non-fungible assets, much more than fungible. Everything is non-fungible. So the more things we tokenize, the better that is. And it's just the constant growth of innovation, evolution. We've seen CryptoKitties in 2017 that was living things on chain that can breathe, that, can, that have DNA. All of that is still inside the NFT culture, NFT space, and it's all exciting. Currently, I see two main wings of NFT space development. One of them is going exchange route. They say, okay, let's tokenize something very valuable. Let's tokenize Rolex. Uh, let's put them in a vault. Let's issue NFTs for that. Let's go to the lending platform and let's take a loan collateralized by this Rolex. That was never possible before. It takes us a minute to take that loan. And that justifies all the trading infrastructure that was built for NFTs. That is exciting because it's a very durable, very sophisticated trading and collateralization and financialization infrastructure for NFTs that happened during this couple, last two years while all these prices was going down. It doesn't make sense, at least in my perception, too much sense to use this powerful financialized infrastructure for trading just pictures. But when we talk that, okay, let's put some real world assets on chain, suddenly it unlocks. You, you, you connect your home to the same infrastructure, you can have a mortgage in two minutes. So that's one particularly exciting direction for me. Another exciting direction for me is purely digital products that are using NFTs as consumer goods. I own a Tamagotchi, I need to feed it, I, otherwise it dies on chain. Uh, I, I enjoy my art lives on chain. I bought it for $20 to support the artist. I bought uh, a token bound, an NFT that can own other NFTs character. I can buy a hat for him. I can use that in the social network, in the online game. So just purely digital ultimate fantasy world where you enjoy having your online identity and owning things. That's two very distinct things, and I'm equally excited about both of them. 100%. And, you know, when you talk about this digital ecosystem that you guys have and this world that you can basically create with these, these real-world applications, even with the NFTs, I want to understand a little bit more about how you guys select different projects that will be featured on the platform. What are the criteria that you guys use to determine which projects and which NFTs actually make it onto Rarible? Yeah. Rarible historically been very open platform. So... Actually, if you have any NFT in your wallet, that NFT will be on the platform. That is our motto of being permissionless. That's how we started, that you do not need to ask variable permission to become on the platform. Over time, we created a specific like drops section that you can get on. Today, you can get on the main page of variable and there will be separate drops happening. So those ones are curated. And again, the ultimate vision for that is to make them self-service, totally permissionless. So every artist from every part of the world would be able to do that. So far, we're curating them to work with the leaders of the space to understand their needs, to make the product better by being in, by, without the releasing product to the full scale of people, we, we allow ourselves more iteration cycles to, to just perfect it. And the criteria would be a combination of either cultural relevance or the leadership in the space. So if you're a big artist and you come to us and you say, I have an innovative idea, let's drop with us. Of course, we would, we would be hosting that. But that's not only this. We often host the up and coming creators that are new to the space, that want exposure, that want the excitement that they made their first sales. Just recently, there has been an open edition 
uh, with with a low price point of I think like twenty or thirty dollars with the total seventeen sales. And for the creator, he told us, I know for somebody that might not be much, but for me, that's very important that I've been here. I, I was put on wearable. I, I dropped with you. Thank you guys so much. So sometimes these drops just basically allow artists to pay for rent. And that's, that's important for us. This, this cultural, the, the fact that we can be a voice in the space is very important. But again, coming back long-term, everything will be possible for everyone. Self-service. That's, that's the motto. Absolutely. That's awesome. I, I love that. And let's dive into the layer two now to build off of that, right? You guys recently launched the layer two solution. I want to talk about the scalability of this for you guys too, because I think that might be the most exciting piece, but what else is it going to affect about the Rarible platform? And more importantly, maybe just start it simply for us. For anybody that's not super familiar with layer two, what does it mean and how is it going to change things for you guys as a whole? Yeah. If you're not familiar my advice would be to get familiar because the next market cycle, the next bull run, we will have half of the activity happening on layer twos. Just today, a half of the old new created NFTs are not created on Ethereum. Layer two, in the most simple way to explain that is the subnet of Ethereum. There is a main net Ethereum where you have quite high of the gas prices, maximum security, and now everything is interconnected. So you enjoy full interoperability between all the contracts. One, you, can, you can have one transaction that would swap money on Uniswap and buy an NFT and, and put it into as a collateral on the lending platform. So that's great, but you have to pay for that. So now there is a new subnets are created that are trading ability to be interoperable for being more affordable. So you can say, okay, we don't need interoperability with everything. There would be just an NFT subnet. All the NFT projects are going to be there. It's integrated. It, it has the same security guarantees as Ethereum. It is uh, settling all the funds on Ethereum. Your balances still exist on Ethereum. You need to move your money over the bridge into the subnet and inside the subnet, everything happens much faster. That's very traditional concept. Database sharding works the same way. You have a um, better speed, better scalability. Locally, you have you have traded that for slightly decreased composability on a global scale. That's the next generation of Ethereum adoption. There is Optimism, Arbitrum, ZK Sync, Polygon, of course, all these amazing L2s, and they even allow you to create your own own layer two solution. If you're a big project, mm, we've seen multiple projects create their own layer two solution. We see the proliferation of that and that enables unprecedented number of transaction with the high security guarantee. And that's going to power the next bull run with all sorts of social applications and everything that wasn't possible before. That's great. And let's, let's build off of this really quickly. It's not even one of my questions, but I'm personally curious about this too. So with layer two, this is more of a broad kind of industry thought leadership question. Do you think that layer two is going to help the entire industry, not just for rareable, but NFTs and crypto and, and everything else associated in this space to move forward and get over some of the cons uh, security concerns, some of the scaling concerns? Is layer two really going to transform the way that we're able to operate and grow this industry entirely? Absolutely. At the height of the bull market, the cost of creation of NFT was $100 on Ethereum mainnet. That almost choked the growth of the ecosystem, NFT ecosystem. We had artists coming on the platform saying, I'm just clicking buttons multiple times and I already lost $1,000. That's obviously not what consumer expects from, from the space. And we've seen the base Coinbase launched layer, their own layer two. We're seeing the friend stack, a consumer ready application with email and login, email and password login with the scalability with very fast and cheap transactions that enabled social application. It wasn't possible before. We're going to see 10 times more, 100 times more things like that in the bull run. And that's going to move this whole space forward. Awesome. Okay, so two more questions for you. Since we're talking about layer two and scaling as it is, let's talk about Rarible specifically for a second as we start to close. What new features are coming up for Rarible? What new pieces of the platform are going to be added that you're most excited about? And 
for investors too, or people that are going to be using Rarible, what should they be on the lookout for to be ready to use that you guys are working on now? Right. The biggest priority for Rarible today is the vertical marketplace segment, because we believe that NFTs are a creative asset and they are not meant to be equalized by one marketplace that tries to unify the experience with all NFTs under one platform. We believe in multiple variety of NFTs for domain names, for DAOs, for comics, for collectibles, for music, for art that all require tailored experience. And this is our big, big priority that we are shifting right now to. Uh, this is even number one number one priority and number one category of things that we spend time for internally with Rarible. It's all built on the Rarible protocol and the Rary Foundation. It's the company that is uh, governing the protocol. So for investors, that would be mostly interesting to get exposure maybe to uh, some of the things that are built like that. So, and I'm personally excited on the consumer side on the multiple minting mechanics when you most of the coolest nfts are not yet created that's that's not my cita citation uh i saw it somewhere from twitter but i love it a lot most of the coolest nfts are yet to be created and we are going to see new nfts created on layer twos we want to help people to drop this we're helping people to drop nfts for mcfarlane toys the toy company they are did almost a million dollar in, in total sales for the virtual toys that they're doing. And they are using completely different mechanics. Let's see, okay, I'm buying a toy and I don't know which one I'm getting. It's a randomized one, or I know when I'm getting it right away, or I need to wait a week and then something happens in a week from now, or there is a pack, I need to unpack it and there's going to be five of them dropping. So all of this is what consumers love, consumer engagement. It will be incorporated into every part of the variable stack, both into the centralized marketplace that we have, one big marketplace, as well as the vertical marketplaces, as well as the API. That's like I'm personally excited about. That's great. Awesome. And one more to kind of close this out on that one too, and to build on that in five years, where do you see the NFT marketplace being? You guys have a lot of exciting things in the works. Like I said, the fact that you're this busy, even when we faced a down market for the last two years and you have so much stuff going on, that's a great sign for this industry and for you guys. So for Rarible and for the NFT space in five years, where do you think we're going to be and what's going to be happening in the industry? NFT space will heavily proliferate. There is going to be... Everybody knew NFTs as pictures, as art in 2017, not in 2021, even when, when, when it boomed. The next generation of NFTs will see everything NFT. We'll see NFTs applied to multiple different verticals, and there will be as many NFTs as emails. Everybody would have an online identity with hundreds or thousands of NFTs carefully categorized on this identity. This identity will be available when you connect to the DAP to recognize who you are, to have your avatar, to have all your assets. There will be financial, non-financial, consumer use cases. It will be, this is the metaverse. There is a cool essay by uh, Paki McCormick, I think, that is called the great online game that says that the we are all playing this game, even going to work. We're press buttons on our computer for our salaries. It's it's all just one big online game. And and the Ethereum is the settlement layer for that game. So NSTs are going to be the first class citizen of that big online game. Um, and Rarible would play the part of being Shopify in this big world. Everybody today in the physical world can jumpstart their own business. We love entrepreneurs with Shopify and everybody tomorrow will be able to jumpstart their own business with virtual items, with variable community marketplace to just be an independent creator and earn money online. That's awesome. Alex, uh, we're coming up on the Benzinga Future of Digital Assets show, the FinTech show, like I mentioned here in November. What topics are you excited to hear about at the event? What do you think the best content is going to be when it comes to some of the discussions around NFTs and digital assets? 
I think that's going to be different with NFTs and digital assets. I am pretty sure that in digital assets, everybody will discuss how to put treasury bills on the blockchain and earn yield. I'm, 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 I'm absolutely confident in that. That's the hottest topic in the macroeconomy. The yields are high. It's higher than in DeFi. We've just seen the new ways of putting that on chain, of tokenizing the blockchain infrastructure is robust enough. The MakerDAO has, is the, I think the stable coins today are what, like number 16 sovereign treasury uh, bills holder in the world, stable coins. So that's definitely going to be discussed in every corner of Benzinga conference. Um, I would be curious to hear about that. And in terms of the NFTs, I think people would just like learn carefully assess it's not there yet what's going on please tell me and of course the entering of brands is important the people want to see serious businesses enter the space and do something with that makes a ton of sense alex selnikov chief strategy officer at rarible thank you so much for taking time out of what you've already told us is clearly a very busy schedule very excited about what you guys are building and we're so glad you were here to share it with us thank you again